Chapter 5 is all about electricity. In this chapter, we'll look at just the basics and fundamentals of charge. We'll look at forces, potential, fields. Uh, then we'll get into the applications in the body. Uh, there's a lot of applications of electricity in the body and then also in healthcare services where you use electrical devices. So first, let's just begin with the fundamentals of what is charge. Fun, uh, I don't, this is a fundamental property. of matter. Another fundamental property that we've talked about is mass. So it's akin to mass, that just all matter has charge, all matter has mass. The fundamental unit of charge, that is a particular amount, is 1E. 1E is the charge of an electron or a proton. One fundamental unit of charge is the same as the charge on an electron or proton. For an electron, we're going to abbreviate that with an E minus or proton. And for a proton, we'll go E plus. So the E for electron isn't for electron, it's for the fundamental unit, which is the, the letter E. The unit for this is in coulombs. And 1E is equivalent to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 Coulomb. So that is the, the value for the charge on a proton or an electron. Charge is quantized, or excuse me, char the charge of one proton is 1E. The charge of one electron is exactly that, but opposite, minus 1E. And the charge of a neutron is zero fundamental units of charge. Charge is quantized. That means that it's going to come in specific quantities. It is quantized. It means it comes in specific quantities. Other things we know are quantized. For example, children are quantized. You can have one child. You can have two children. You can have three children. But you cannot have one half of a child. That just doesn't make any sense. So I would, I would say that I only have three children if I calculated there to be a half a child. And in a similar way, I can have one proton. One proton would be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. I can have two protons. That would be 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. I can have three protons. That would be 4.8 times 10 to the minus 19, but for example, I cannot have 4.0 times 10 to the minus 19. That is not an allowable charge because simply it's you know a fraction of a proton, and I can't have a fraction of a proton or an electron. Um, all atoms have charges, but most are typically neutral. That means that they have an equal number of electrons and protons. And so for example here, I have one, two, three electrons, and then down in here, whoops, I'm sorry, I have one, two, three protons, and then in addition I have some neutrons. So in a neutral atom, I have equal numbers of electrons and protons. If I have unequal numbers, those are called cations or anions. A cation has a positive charge. That means it has too few electrons. An anion has a negative charge. That means it has too many electrons. When we talk about uh, atomic physics and atomic chemistry, that is that, that how I change from one material to another, I, 
I'll talk on uh, how I change the charges of an atom. I only talk about adding or removing electrons because it's relatively easy to take an electron and strip it away from an from an atom. However, it's quite difficult to take a proton and strip away a proton or to add a proton. We'll talk about that process in the nuclear physics chapter, but right now we'll only talk about removing or adding electrons to an existing atom or our uh, our molecule. So atoms become charged by the removal or addition of electrons, not protons. And I've already said this, but let's just say it again. Charge is quantized. That means it comes in particular quantities, uh, plus or minus 1e, plus or minus 2e, plus or minus 3e, and on and on. And then the conservation of charge is charge is not only quantized, but charge is also conserved. That just means that we do not produce or destroy charges, we simply move them around. So we'll never talk about producing a proton out of nothing, or we'll never talk about producing an electron out of nothing. We'll take it from one place and move it into another.